So the house that you're living in now was part of the estate, Phillips Estate, is that right? Yes, indeed. Yeah. The built when? This one was 1868. Uh-huh. So um, they, they seem to have building periods with, with the various estates. Uh, the land here is quite unusual because effectively there's only been three three ownerships of the land since the dissolution. Um, eventually the, the Crown sold off the land here to a chap called William Fowler, who was from Shrewsbury, he was provost of Shrewsbury, quite an important man on the Council of the Marches. And he, he was a serial buyer of monastic land. He lived at a place called Harnage Grange in um, Shropshire, which was formerly part of Bedworth Abbey. And he bought in 1565. His family and successors were here tottering on. Um, and that estate eventually collapsed about 1820. Then Thomas Wilson came, who was a London solicitor. Um, seemed to be quite a go-ahead sort of chap from what we can see from the, the records. Uh, got himself into a deal with Lord Portman to build a market in what we would now call Portman Street in London. <laughs> Um, and went bankrupt. So he went off to Australia, to Adelaide, where he became only the second mayor of Adelaide. So he made a new life for himself, very successful. And we still have some contact with his uh, descendants in Australia. And that then ushered in the Phillips family, who were mill owners in, in Stockport. Um, and they were here until 1959, when these, this property was sold out of the estate, the two houses were sold and bought by a well, very well known local character called Mercy Griffiths, who uh, lived in the house next door to me. And she bought both houses. She bought one because she wanted some accommodation for her parents, and uh, she thought she might live in the other one. Well, um, one next, this one was £350 because it had a bit more land than next door, which was only £300. So that's the history of these wow. two houses. Um, and the build time is the 1860s, which was quite significant because the, the Phillips were obviously very proactive on the estate at that time, which was certainly not true of many of the years when the Fowlers were here. The estate seemed to be very badly managed from about 1750 onwards and we're in a long, long period of decline. But the Phillips were um, initially absent landlords anyway, but most of them were absentee landlords um, most of the time. And they really got to grips from the 1850s onwards and they did a lot of building, rebuilding the first, I think the first estate houses they built were the, uh, the Lai and Wendelton and Poise. Uh, they are little, little pairs of cottages. Um, I think you will obviously have seen them. Um, and they would go back to the 1840s shortly after they arrived. But their main expansion seemed to have been in the 1860s when they built um, schools, they built three pairs of houses like this, the, this, this pair which eventually, they were known as school cottages originally and eventually became Piccadilly. I'm not quite sure why Piccadilly, except that I think they had connections with, uh, I suspect they had a London home in Piccadilly because two of their children were christened in St James's Church, Piccadilly. And um, that and Paddock down near the Union and uh, Cundy Cottage, I don't know if you come across Cundy Cottage, up at the back end of the valley up the Twer Dog up towards Bukhasani. They've, that's been uh, converted into a single house. Um, so th these were 1860s. Um, what was the purpose of the estate building? For workers, presumably? Oh, for workers, and um, yes. Um, uh, certainly these were, were um, quite large mm. by, by the standards of, of the time. Uh, the Wenlock Cottage and Loy Cottage was another pair of cottages, as you see coming into the village. It's now one. Uh, we're very small. Uh, at one, one time there was about 12 people living in one of the Loy Cottages, which is two up, two down. 
no no privying up the back sort of thing. Um, so it was a relatively basic, um, but th these were better. Also in the 1850s, they rebuilt the Abbey Farm, as it was known, which we now call Home Farm. And that was the model farm for the estate. And there all the best practices of agriculture were on display there. It's a splendid range of buildings. Um, the coach house, coachman's accommodation, stabling, etc., etc. Wonderful buildings, but sadly not fit for purpose anymore for modern agriculture. 